Hi, I'm Nesvers and I do stuff. Today I want to look at the fun movement mechanic in Dome Romantic's game. Funnily enough, Dome Romantic is also made with Godot engine. So in this video I will show you how to create a simple top-down movement that suits well with floaty space-side scroller like Dome Romantic. So simple that I will show how to add kickback, like Dome Romantic walls. In a way you can insert your logic to expand this behavior for your game. Rigid bodies that feel hard to drag, physics joints to pull those heavy objects, and manually drawn lines. First, let's set up our project windowing and input. I'm going for lower resolution game, so the resolution is set to 480 and 270. It's one fourth of full HD, but you can make it the way you like. Stretch mode is set to 2D and aspect is keep height as my settings. For inputs I create move right, left, up, down and interact actions. Map them how you like, but for myself I used physical keys introduced in 3.4 update. Now we can start with the easiest part, making walls. For that I'll use simple static body 2D and my script to make shape visible in color. With that ready, we can block out the level. The project is going to a repository so you can take a look at it yourself. The link is in description. I won't be covering the drilling in the game, but you'll get the kickback mechanic. About that a little bit later. The even simpler task will be making a scene for the game's rope, which I found easy to replicate with Dumped String 2D. We need a scene for spawning them for each connection and have the spring settings ready. For rocks we need rigged body 2D and the crucial detail is physics material. That gives harder dragging. I'll give it my shape drawing script. Play with all available parameters on rigid body to find the game feel you like or even spark a new game idea. The most important part is to decide which collision bit to set for your items. I'll put the third bit for the layer and for the mask I want to have items not only collide with walls what are left in the default first bit but also I want items to collide with each other. So I'll set the third bit too. Now we can start to work on the player scene. To keep visuals simple it also will get my shape drawing script. Camera 2D for the built-in camera that follows the player. I'll add area 2D to detect items we want to connect. Again, now the important part is to assign collision bits. I'm reserving the second bit for the player and I want the player to collide only with walls. So it's only the first bit for the mask. For the player's script I like to start with an empty script. I want to export a few variables for easier control in the inspector. Those are movement speed, acceleration for the game's feel, strength for carrying weight, spring scene which will do the preload of the spring scene, and the last one area path for player's detector. Then assign right away the references to the area node with an onready variable. I'm using couple of variables for the player. Velocity will keep movement speed, direction for input direction, bump strength depends on your acceleration speed and game feel. The item list array keeps reference to items and the same for the spring list array. The draw function for each item will draw a line connecting it to the player. It means no item, no drawing. I've seen a lot of beginner's codes that are using if checks for each direction and that is comparable to shooting in your own leg with a black hole because that's where you'll spend your time when you'll need to add something more than walking direction to your game. My suggestion is to always create a usable solution for more than one purpose. So here's my approach. In the physics process I put together a neat vector for desired movement direction. Each frame I reset it to zero. It works by subtracting opposite movement direction strengths. Positive direction subtracted by negative direction. In the result holding to the right value will be zero to one. 
To the left it will be 0 to minus 1, but holding both directions will cancel each other and will get 0. The same for the y axis. And after that I normalize vector so it will always get a vector with length of 1, if there is any input. In this example there's only one use case for this vector. But usually I use horizontal value for sprite flipping. Carry multiply is used as percent for encumbrance. I used the max function for the value to stop at zero. With all needed data I calculate the theoretical maximal velocity. Then using linear interpolation it's easy to get acceleration and deacceleration values. The important part is to actually tell physics to move the player and conveniently Godot also solves collisions. To do that give move and slide function a velocity but optionally also direction floor faces are facing. If later you need to detect floors, walls or ceilings it is returning the reminder of the movement in case of a collision so it's better assign that value back to velocity. To create bumping of walls I'm using functions in the kinematic body 2D class. Starting with creating for loop for each slide which is basically touching against surfaces. Then reference each collision by using loop index i. I don't have any fancy checking for collision so my rule is simply a valid collision value. In the end I'm triggering the draw function by calling the update function. I prefer to use unhandled input for player inputs that don't influence movement physics and it allows GUI or other situations to stop inputs that shouldn't go further. So if an interact action event is triggered I use built-in function in ARIA2D get overlapping bodies. Then I go through each detected item and check if it isn't already inside the item list and if so I pass it to my function connect item then force the function to stop with return. If all detected items are already inside in the list and the for loop didn't return I trigger the remove item function. In the connect item function first thing I check if the item list is under the allowed size if no force to return. After that I spawn a spring from the scene and add it as a child. To link with spring requires node pass relative to it. So I use a built-in function for that with player and the item. Then save references into lists. The removal is simple. At the start I check if the list is empty, if so return. I chose to remove the last added because it's the fastest way with arrays and it comes with a nice function pop back. In my example I need to quail free only for the spring but maybe you have some other ideas for the item. I hope this video was useful and if you would like to have a chat with me come and join my discord. The link is in description. In case you have some game mechanics suggestions Leave them in the comment section. See you later. Cheers.